it was either buying a flatbed or buying one on Facebook Marketplace, which a brand new one's $3,200 for a good one, or, you know, just making my own. Before we get into today's video, guys, I want to let you know that I did drop a brand new design on DiffinDiesel.com. Right here, Soot Empire with the crown. We're going to have a lot more designs. Super sick, super limited, so get you on before they sell out. Like I said, DiffinDiesel.com. Let's get right back into the video. This truck is missing something. This thing needs a flatbed. Yeah. CM truck beds? Okay, okay, well, pretty nice. What about uh, Bradfordville? Dang, those are pretty nice too. How much do they cost though? And you got fold up and down side rails, diamond plate, built-in gooseneck, LED lighting. Dang. Let's see pricing. $3,200? Hell no. I can make that shit myself. Maybe if I just cut right here, there, and there, we can make this thing a flatbed. So hear me out. I know you guys are saying, what is this dude doing, dude? He's cutting into a perfectly good bed. He can just go ahead and put that on the truck or even sell it. Uh, well, I don't want to put this bed back on. For me, personally, I'm not too fond of long beds. Unfortunately, this is a long bed, so um, I prefer short beds. I think they look better with the second gens. Unless you have a single cab long bed second gen, that's the only long bed that I really like. So for me, it was either buying a flat bed or buying one on Facebook Marketplace, which a brand new one's $3,200 for a good one, or, you know, just making my own. I ran out of this. I'm not gonna run this down anymore because they tend to explode when they get smaller than, uh, smaller than that. I may need you guys' help because I know this isn't gonna be a single part series, it's gonna be multiple series because I can't do this all in one day and all in one video. So I need your guys' help. Now, with this part right here, you can see that it has part of the bed still and then it's not quite lined up with the bed on the inside, which I will shave this down, cut this down to equal the height of the inside of the bed. Um, should I, get rid of this completely or should i just cut this down equal with the um the actual bed and weld some metal in it will do that for the whole bed so that side is going to get all new metal if you guys choose that and then this side will um still have to figure out what i'm going to do with the wheel wells i made us clean this up um cut it along here so it's um so it's even with the wheel well I may even just be able to, it's just riveted in, so I may even just be able to grind that rivet down and just take this whole side off and it'll just be the wheel well. Um, and then after we get this all cut, 
Um, I may even put it on before I weld the new metal because this is what the truck has been looking like for the last six months. <laughs> so uh, maybe not six months, but um, I need a bed on here to be able to drive. I don't need a bed on there to drive, but I want something that doesn't look like this. And even if this looks bad, which it probably will, the premise of this truck is to have it not look good. So I resprayed the hood just in black. And then we went ahead and sprayed the bumper in black too in spray paint. Not professional. No, there it looks good from, you know, 10 feet away. And then when you get close, it's got runs and drips and everything like that. But the whole truck idea is not to make it look good. The thing that I want this truck to be is you guys know if you guys are new to the channel I want this truck to be a sleeper so it doesn't need to look good from the outside it just needs to have good engine parts a good transmission which we'll get into that uh, here soon not in this video but you guys will be excited when I tell you something about a new transmission uh, just just hang on um, good engine parts good transmission and I want this truck to be fast so whole premise a sleeper truck looks terrible on the outside but it's gonna pull away from you at a stoplight or just hammer down zero to 60 quick. So um, it's definitely gonna be a lot faster than this truck, I can tell you what. And this truck was decently fast. It wasn't the fastest in the world, um, but it was pretty quick for a lifted truck compared to a stock truck. But this truck is going to be a beast and that is the whole plan for this truck. Not make it look good, but it's gonna be fast. So we're making a new flatbed for it out of the old original bed. So since I don't have any more this, I need to run to the store, but I don't have a vehicle. So you guys know I gotta run to the store. No, I'm just kidding, I'm not gonna run to the store. I'm just gonna wait for my girlfriend to get back from work. But we need to do the EGT tap. I've already done the fuel pressure. So we'll go ahead and show you that video right now. We need to do the EGT tap. I have two EGTs, one for the glow shift and one for the quadzilla. So with the glow shift, I'm gonna put it in the normal spot right here. I think I'm gonna put the quadzilla in between the fourth and fifth cylinder. So we'll be able to get a reading close to the back and then we'll get a reading right here. And we'll be able to see what the difference in temperature is just by having them in different spots, which most people say you want it as far to the back as possible because that's gonna get you a more accurate reading because the back cylinders are always hotter than the front ones. So uh, that's what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and get the drill, get the tap, and get those EGT probes installed. The Soot Empire, baby. So I'm out here with the new Yanmar YM1500. Just bought this from Mike a couple days ago. And when we got it, Mike traded the Model T for some cash and this tractor. And I bought the tractor from him. So he got all the cash that he was looking for. And I got a tractor. One problem with the tractor is that the three point hitch does not go up or down. So I took off this plate right here. This holds the top linkage of whatever implement you're using. And uh, you can't really see it in there, but the piston isn't going in and out to lower and raise the three point. So what I'm doing is I already took off this part right here. I'm getting fluid. I'm getting hydraulic fluid pumping through here. So I know the pump is good. It's getting fluid, but for some reason, the ram isn't going in and out when i push this lever up to lift up and then down to go down this piece right here goes in and out when the tractor's on it doesn't do it when the tractor's off but it does move so what i'm doing is i'm taking this part off to access the ram and see why it's binding up i'm just getting the bolts off right now 
and we'll see why this three point isn't working. So initially I was gonna take off that part that has that dial on there. Um, I tried to, I just went ahead and put it back together because it wasn't coming off. There's a bunch of O-rings and stuff in there that I don't wanna tear. Um, I went ahead and took this actuator apart um, or off again. And I went ahead and took off this right here. There's a spring in there that pushes the actuator back when this gets pressed by the lever that controls the three-point hitch and the piston in there wasn't moving and this part right here where my thumb is wasn't going in and out smoothly and now that it's free it's gonna take a lot of pressure to do it because the lever's got to hit it but when I press it down it springs back up and that's because the spring in here is pushing that piston back and it's allowing it to um, return this spring and push this back out. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, throw some RTV on this, and then um, hopefully that fixes our problem. Um, just that actuator in there fixes uh, the three-point hitch, and hopefully it's nothing, nothing too serious because um, it'd probably be worth more than what we paid for this tractor to fix it, so. Uh, I'm hoping that this is a problem and hopefully that fixes it. Easy fix, boys. I got it up. Well, just finishing up the grass stopped right here because I just got a shot with hot coolant because the old radiator hose just blew up so obviously that needs to be replaced all the lines pretty much need to be replaced but this thing is running good man it's cutting grass good I fixed a three-point hitch um, I still have to adjust this a little bit because this one is higher lifting the bush hog up higher than this side is so it's uneven and then um down over here i have to tighten this bolt up so it's not all crooked and shit but uh it's cutting the grass good you can see the lines where yesterday i was cutting the corners of the bush hog were digging into the ground because i didn't have the three-point hitch um working so i went ahead and cut it anyway and right over there, it's really dug into the ground. It's all dirt over there, pretty much. But now that it's fixed, I put the stop here. So it's not gonna go any lower than that. It's gonna stay up at the height that I want it, uh, which is nice. And this grass is gonna be able to be cut uh, pretty much whenever it needs to now. Just got back from the auto parts store. Got a brand new hose. That is the old hose. That is the crack that sprayed coolant all over me. And this is the new hose. It's not an exact fit, but I can go ahead and cut this thing down about right here and it should work. So um, don't wanna wait a couple days for a brand new one to come in the mail. So we're just gonna modify this one and put it on the tractor and finish cutting the grass. All right, guys, we got the first side done, man. Took about one, 
to, I think it took fourth disc for this one side. Um, I went a little hard on the angle grinder. That's probably why it took so many. But we got the first side off. It doesn't look great, but we still have some cleaning up to do. Um, I was talking to Mike yesterday and we talked about using the original sides as the plates to run right here so we don't have to go buy brand new sheet metal. We'll just go ahead and cut them out of the original sides and use that to cover up these gaps right here. Still have to do some trimming on the fender. That is going to be the first part of doing this bed. In next video, we're going to try to get this other side cut off. And we're actually going to try to mount it up to the truck. We're going to try to put it on the truck. And then we can mock up where the fuel tank tube is going to be. Um, it's going to be somewhere uh, around here. That's where the original one was. So uh, we'll just have to finagle that. We'll probably have to cut some of the tube off to make it fit. We'll just make it so that it just comes straight right here. We'll get a cap and everything like that. We'll probably just use the original and then just weld it straight into right there. But we got a lot done in this video. I think so. Um, we weren't able to do the EGT gauges because after I recorded that clip, it started pouring. And then yesterday, um, me and Mike needed my impact. So I brought it with me. He drove and I left it in his truck yesterday. So I don't have my impact to have the battery to connect to the drill. So we're going to have to wait on that until I get the impact. But yeah, this little tractor, man, this thing is a beast. Has to get a new tire. And I got the three-point hitch working, man. It works flawless. Um, this bush hog does some work. Still have to finish up some. Um, but a lot of you guys are probably saying, why'd you buy a tractor to cut your grass? Because I can. <laughs> That's. <laughs> I mean, I could have bought a riding lawnmower, but I think a tractor is cooler. I like driving tractors. So uh, we got a tractor. The old Yanmar 1500. Um, I don't think I showed you guys the uh, new radiator hose. Worked out perfectly. Cut it a little bit short, but I was able to make it work. So, uh, we're good on that. This thing just needs a bath now. Good degreasing. It's not charging the battery, so I'm going to have to buy a battery charger or find mine. And then just have this thing on, uh, the battery charger, so whenever I go to start this thing, because... If I go to start it now, no key. But if I went to start it now, the battery wouldn't even turn this thing over. So I had to jump it like 15 times today because I had to keep stopping and starting. Um, then the hose broke and then I had to bring the truck over there, had to bring the truck over here. Um, just whenever I had to start the tractor up, it wanted to die. Gotta have that red dye in there, that off-road diesel. But if you guys wanna see more videos on this, uh, Yanmar tractor, whatever I do to it. This is pretty much all the way down. I have to mess with this a little bit. Um, I have to take these off and actually put those in there, get a new pin for that side. There's a lot of stuff I gotta do this thing just to, you know, fix it up a tiny bit. But if you guys wanna see videos on the tractor, let me know in the comments below. But that's gonna be it for the video, guys. Stay tuned for more videos on the original bed to flatbed conversion. And also, don't forget, link in the bio, dippindiesel.com. Go get your Soot Empire merch and your Soot Empire decals right there. I got a five and a half inch decal, an eight inch decal, and then the 11 inch decal just like that. Man, these things are so sick. I love that, I love that logo. I got a couple more logos that I'm gonna be dropping here in the next couple days or uh, coming weeks. Definitely decals are gonna come first because I make those two orders. So if you guys order something, I can make it right away and uh, send it out within a day or two. Usually within the same day, if you guys order in the morning, I'm able to ship it out that day, um, cut it and send it out to you that day. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. I'm hopefully gonna get a call from the twins this week so we can go check out the powder coat. It's been a couple weeks. Uh, I'm not bugging them. I don't need it right away. Um, so there's that. And then we got some custom tuning. Um, I already got the email from the guy. We'll, we'll show you guys that here in the next coming videos. And then also I'm waiting on a call from uh, a certain company for a certain, you know, you guys know what. Um, so I'm super excited about that. I want to take this truck on for the first drive but I need someone to follow behind me in case the transmission craps out because the transmission is not that good. Hint, hint, the company that's gonna contact me or call me back, hint, hint, transmission. Uh, uh, but um, yeah, so 
hopefully this week we'll be able to take this thing on a first drive. I may have Justin come over and then just follow behind me with a toe strap in case it uh, crops out. But I'm able to move it around in the yard. So I have confidence that it will make it on its first drive. And I already put one of the tunes in. And man, that thing is... I'm just going over a lot of stuff that's going to happen in the next couple videos. Or two or three videos. So just guys stay tuned. Subscribe if you guys are new. Check out DippinDiesel.com. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Dippin' Diesel out.